Once upon a time, there was this little boy and nobody loved him except for Jesus. This young man couldn't go through his entire life without friends because it would just be weird. So long story longer, he made a wish from his bedroom that would change the course of his future history or whatever. Starlight, star bright, all this CGI tonight? Wish for a friend, preferably white, please grant my wish tonight. Next day, it's revealed that his wish came true and he's blessed with some kind of Miracle Man. Fun fact, Miracle Man was one of the characters from the movie A Million Ways to Die in the West and the cameos don't stop there. A 1989 Golden Globe Best Actor for a Musical or Comedy Series nominated actor pops in for an on-screen interview, so you get some 80s nostalgia that makes you feel all tingly inside. Later on, the kid who couldn't borrow a best friend in the first 15 minutes is all of a sudden a big man on campus now. His popularity is illustrated when he's at a park and this fat kid with an attitude even gives him the time of day. Now as cool as this sounds, not everyone in this world is a fan of magic, supernatural events, or etc. There are a couple of a-hole hater characters. A-hole hater character number one is the character that thinks they're all that and keeps telling everyone how they need to mature and make something of themselves and all of the above. A-hole hater character number two uses his job title to his advantage and this former athlete occasionally makes jokes about how loserish it is for the main character to make friends with the miracle man guy. But whatever, the world is fascinated with the boy's manifest wish and it quickly starts making headlines. It still sucks for him though. See as a viewer you start getting a feeling that his new friend is a bad influence and stuff because the miracle man guy constantly puts him in situations where it seems like he's hallucinating. Personally I'm on the other side of the fence and I think that this new buddy is a good influence. There's some moments where he seems like a better person like the one part where he shows his sensitivity to certain curse words. He's all like oh, maybe you shouldn't swear so much. I bet the angels don't like it. Now on the other hand, I do have to admit that their lifestyle gets out of hand, staying up late, waving their hands in the air like they just don't care, and Miracle Man Guy occasionally shows his wild side during sing-along scenes. This sends the wrong message to some of the side characters, and the movie starts to convince you that the main dude is way too young for his age. When people around him start implying he needs to grow up, he takes a literal approach and finds a loophole by wearing nut hugger high water khaki pants two sizes too small, a shirt and tie to give the impression he's outgrown his clothes and his former lifestyle. Little did he know that life as a big kid sucks. I mean, there's a lot of work. You have to pay taxes, register to vote, know how to pick out good produce, and occasionally get dumped by people you love. Like clockwork, after his recent woes, he takes it out on the Miracle Man guy, and meanwhile, the character that thinks they're all that visits their boss and tells them everything that's been going on. Quite frankly, the boss is a little bit of a jerk during this conversation. This leads to an event where the main character is put on stage for the world to see. Now add insult to injury, as the former athlete guys in the crowd egging everyone on as they all laugh at him. Fast forward to the climax of the movie at the baseball park. Insert asterisk here, but I think this movie's trying its best to teach us a message here. Remember that one guy from the beginning with the smoking habits? We find out that he's about to die. Interesting underlying theme to consider when you're picking out your drug habits. See, apparently with crack and coke, you get a thrill. But with smoking, hmm, that's what kills. After that, we get some hip-hop array hands, and the dead man walking falls to the field. Then later on, when everybody's eyes are sweating and stuff, the character that thinks they're all that redeems his or herself when he or she makes a happy family ever after wish. In closing, say what you want about the popular debate regarding if there's a guy, yes, no, or maybe or whatever, but whoever's granting these wishes, it's good to know that this dude is an equal opportunity advocate, and he's not only looking out for the wishes from the little white boys, but he takes female and diversity target wishes into consideration as well. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You'll agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below, and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <laughs>